Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Drac Reviews. And uh, first of all, I hope everybody's having a, ha a great holiday so far. And this video uh, is yet another review of a 3DS game. So unfortunately, if you guys are expecting game footage, uh, I'm just going to preface this with I don't have a homebrew 3DS. I cannot uh, capture footage. And I know a lot of people are irritated by this statement, but I am not one of those guys who takes my camera and immediately aims it down at the 3DS. I, I literally, I know that a lot of people prefer that. I know a lot of people have no problem with it. I never like videos that, that do that. Um, I always look at it as very unprofessional, very uh, shoddy at best. And so I don't do that practice. So I know a lot of people are irritated because I'm not recording 3DS games, but this is just the way I have to be able to do it. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into today's discussion of Ace Attorney 6, Spirit of Justice. Now, I did a Drac Tries kind of vlog about this um, a couple of months ago. And as of right now, I'm <laughs> I'm not too far into it. I'm, I'm probably... Because unfortunately, I had to take a major break to go work on some of the other review footage that I had. But uh, I believe I'm either halfway or three quarters through the second case in there. <coughs> um, so w from that point, this is kind of a check-in and whether or not I'll actually go further on with it, and maybe I'll even give you guys a final review when I get done, but <coughs> or like a final score when I get done, but here is where I'm at so far with Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice. Uh, starting with the story, it, it's really difficult to not spoil it, because obviously I'm in the first few cases, I already have a feeling of how things are going to go, but um, I really don't want to spoil this for people, obviously, for Ace Attorney fans who haven't been able to get to it just yet, or uh, uh, brand new fans who are looking into this series. So I'm going to try and sum it up as best as I can, but I'm also going to have to be a little vague on the matter. Uh, so the first case basically starts up the, the plot line that we've seen in the trailers, where it looks like Phoenix, uh, our main character, or one of them, is off in the nation of Kurain, and <coughs> I know a lot of uh, a lot of people are weirded out by that. So am I, because we're we're used to Kurain village from, uh, I believe that's the translated village name from uh, Justice for All, the second game. So at that point, we're used to that, but now we are going to the nation of Kurain, which is completely ruled by the religious sect, roughly. Uh, the interesting part about that is that. <clears throat> Phoenix is a visitor in in this country, and he's actually going to go visit longtime uh, sidekick to the series, Maya Fey, who's out in Kurain to finish her training as a spirit medium. At least I believe that's where they're where they're going with it. And she went out to the nation of Kurain uh, due to their heavily spiritual nature to be able to finish up that training. But basically, as soon as we walk in there, we're thrown basically uh, the, the the best way to look at it is phoenix is literally a fish out of water and he's probably not the most liked guy in the room in kurain the main reason we find this out is because instantly our uh our little guide albi yes uh the the legit name for him is albi ur guide i'll be your guide I, I love the the little names that they give people and they're, they're always fun to figure out um, we are actually being led around with our little tour guide and we are sent over to see one of the dances of devotion when Albi is a immediately arrested for murder because that's how Phoenix Wright works. Like there's no such thing as just a, a petty theft trial. It's always murder. Um, I mean, we, we have had petty theft before, but it eventually led into a murder case. So, you know, there's a reason that people make the joke that murder is 80% of what she wrote here. Um, so Albi has been charged with murder and this is where we get the whole fish out of water concept because the court system in Kurain is rather strict. In fact, there are no defense attorneys. So there is a prosecutor and then the lead priestess actually comes in and does what is called a divination seance, uh, to determine, uh, the guilt or innocence of the defendant and through this vision, they determine that uh, either the uh, the victim or the not the victim, but the defendant is guilty or innocent. Eighty percent of the time, it's it's guilty. Let's just put it that way. Or ninety percent of the time, ninety nine percent of the time, it's guilty. And thus, they are sent off to be 
sentenced to death, roughly. A lot of it is uh, centered around going to the Twilight Realm, which is basically a translation way of saying you're going to die and go to hell kind of thing. <clears throat> and Phoenix walks in here and goes, holy crap, where's the defense attorney? And when he steps up to defend Albi, he finds out why there are no defense attorneys in the nation of Kurayin. Uh, so they've had an, uh, an act called the Defense Culpability Act, I believe is what it's called, where a lawyer will suffer the same fate as their client. And that's where a lot of this difference comes into it, not only with the divination seance and actually having to interpret that, but also the fact that if you lose, you share the same penalty as your client. And so at that point, this becomes more of a life or death situation. And I, I think I'm going to stick with that just for the moment for, for Phoenix, because <clears throat> there is an overall plot where he's dealing with the, the inner politics of Kurain and, and how things are. But at the same time, we also have a sec. This is actually a really cool concept that I love that they advertised in the trailers that for most Ace Attorney games, you would get an overarching plot that would move um, throughout the cases that you deal with. But there would be one. In this case, we actually have the possibility of two. Um, I'm not that far into the game, so I don't know if they intersect. But we have two plots because we have Phoenix out in Kurain, but the second case actually puts us in uh, the pilot seat for Apollo Justice, who is running the Right Anything Agency uh, back home with Athena, with Athena Sykes. And if people don't know who she is, she was introduced in the fifth game, Dual Destinies. So she's part of that, um, and you actually will be taking on cases uh, with Apollo <coughs> at home and then Phoenix in Kurain. And the, there is actually hintings in the trailers, I haven't seen this yet in the game, that just as the Kurain plot will be its own thing, there will be a secondary plot that Apollo is dealing, Apollo and Athea, Athena are dealing with while Phoenix is gone. So already the story gets high marks for me because it, it is branching out from its usual norms, but it, it's still as familiar as, as we are with the Ace Attorney franchise and how things work. I especially love the fact that um, what we know of Kurain Village and Maya Fey's family is heavily inspiring or inspired into the nation of Kurain. And the fact that we got um, lots of influences and maybe even like origins uh, to Kurain Village in this nation. And I also do like the introduction of the new characters. I haven't unfortunately met the new prosecutor uh, for the Kurain plot, and I believe there is a, uh, we're just dealing with the usual prosecutor, um, yeah, I, I, I believe it is the, is it Blackwell? I can't remember. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but we also are dealing with the High Priestess Rafa. uh, I don't know if we know her last name, but she's the one that's in charge of the divination seances, and, uh, she actually is kind of the Miles Edgeworth of this uh, of this game, at least from what I can tell, because Phoenix comes in and literally questions her her ability to to use her insights for the dead. Um, like she literally just sits there. Uh, her her ideology is that the the dead won't lie to her. That the dead will not. The dead will be impartial, but. You know, Phoenix does bring up an interesting point of did the dead real did the victim really see everything? Because in some cases they don't. Like how do, how do you justify a guy who got stabbed in the back giving you his testimony? He didn't see who stabbed him. He can only guess who stabbed him. Uh, so at that point, it, it's going to be an interesting mechanic that we can deal with. I especially love the the concept of the divination seances, which does play in the gameplay. Uh, but I digress. Let's let's move on into the other features. Visually. Um, there isn't a whole lot to applaud in this game. It's very much in st it's still very much in the Dual Destinies engine, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. I actually think the Dual Destinies engine moved things along very well in the Ace Attorney series. We went from having very stiff sprites to be able to describe emotions and, and reactions, things like that, to fully animated uh, testimonies, fully animated Phoenix, fully animated Edgeworth. And that helped the series so much more because there's so much more expression that can be made in these cases now with that as part of it. So visually, there's not a whole lot to say it's different because it's Dual Destiny's engine all over again. But it still looks really, really good. So I, I will still applaud it for that. 
Uh, Gameplay-wise, there isn't really a whole lot of change. If you played an Ace Attorney game, you've played this one. The only difference that I can say uh, that there is, at least from my perspective, was the Divination Seance. And the fact that now you have, kind of like with Dual Destinies, where you had the unique new testimony you could get with Athena and her uh, her little buddy Widget. Uh, and psycho or what was it? Analytical psychology. Use analytical psychology to figure out your witness's testimonies. The divination seance is the new one here because you actually have to do interpret the sights, the smells, the sounds that the victim heard and is being portrayed in the divination seance, and actually figure out okay, why did they feel that, and or why did they smell, or why did they hear that when they weren't supposed to? So it is an interesting mechanic to be able to work with. And uh, I have a feeling the later cases will integrate it even even more. But uh, I was very intrigued by the concept of the seance. Uh, so gameplay, I gave it high marks. But I mean, it's it for Ace Attorney fans. Aside from that seance, there really isn't a whole lot of difference. In fact, one of the things that's bugged me is we haven't had the crime scene stuff since, uh, or being able to like dust for prints and things like that since I think Apollo Justice was the last one that did it. I don't think Dual Destinies did it. I'll have to I'll have to think about that, but I like that mechanic. I would love to see that back uh, on the Apollo and Athena end, and I don't. Yeah, it hasn't been to my knowledge where I'm at uh, something that that I've been able to to get into. Uh, audio wise, not a whole lot has changed here either. Uh, the music is very much from Dual Destinies. It's very much familiar from what we're used to with the usual tracks of Ace Attorney. The only difference is that we now have the the tracks for Kurain, which are very solemn, very somber, very uh, very much like a a Buddhist temple. And I actually do like that concept when you walk into the Kurain courtroom, that it sounds very Zen like and very peaceful. Um, granted, I mean, not a whole lot of things have changed here. In the first case, you are dealing with a with a Winston Payne uh, again. And then you are also dealing with a judge, only this time he has more Asian influences in his robes and stuff like that instead of the usual judge we're used to. So not a whole lot has changed there. And audio-wise, I do like the new tracks, but it's still it's still very much the same stuff we've been hearing for, for many games now. Uh, as far as replay value and presentation, granted, I haven't finished the game, but I've always found replay value, and this is just me, and being able to go through the cases again just to be able to, to see the story and, and see things unfold that maybe I didn't notice the first time around. Uh, can I honestly call that replay value? Probably not because that's my own personal assessment. But I would say that there is some replay value. I have a feeling that there are DLC cases if they aren't out already that are coming to Spirit of Justice. <coughs> um, there are going to be extras that will come later, like additional costumes for... Uh, characters in the game so there there is some level of replay value but little i mean i do know a lot of ace attorney fans who just play through it the one time and they're fine with it and that's that's okay that's that's completely within your right to be able to do that uh, as well as overall presentation it's still very solid but it's very much in the dual destinies engine which in that game was revolutionary not necessarily here and so at that point i had to give it a little bit of a mark down from that um, as far as a final score, obviously I haven't finished the game and I would love to finish it before I give that final score. Uh, but right now, if I were to, th well, I'm not even going to theorize. I, I really shouldn't theorize about it before I, I get there. So yeah, this is going to work like a check-in review roughly. I will get back to this and give you a final score regardless, whether it be a final score of bad or good. I mean, uh, cause I could easily come into like three quarters of the game and just not want to continue with it. And I do leave myself that option. But as far as this check-in review, it is good. I'm excited for the cases that I'm seeing thus far. And I look forward to the DLC cases and the overall story that can be told here, uh, in this Ace Attorney game. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this review of Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, at least the check-in portion of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for subscribing, for liking this content, and for being able to give me your feedback and your comments. I always do appreciate that, even when it's negative, because you have a right to be able to have your voice heard too. Uh, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Thanks again for Thanks again for watching, and of course, I will see you guys next time for the next review.